Hi again, I'm Danny Gregory, and I am here to teach you how to draw. This is the next in a set of tutorials that I've been making. If this is the first one you're watching, have fun, but I would also urge you to go back to the beginning and watch these in sequence because I'm teaching different bits and bobs, different parts of the drawing process, different ways of looking and seeing that will help you to become an artist or at least to draw anything you want to accurately. So let's plunge right into an exercise. Um, first thing I'm going to do is take off my shoe and put it on the table in front of me. I'm going to do a quick drawing of the shoe and then I'll explain what it is that I'm doing and why. Hold on a second. I'm doing some of the things that we've talked about in previous tutorials, which is I'm doing essentially a contour drawing. I'm starting by drawing the outside of it. Yeah, it's a blindish contour, let's just say. You know, I'm drawing fairly quickly. I would probably normally draw slower, but I think no matter how quickly I drew. If I didn't take into account some of the things we're going to talk about today, I probably end up with a fairly similar drawing. Faces and looking at the negative space here. And you know, there's there's some corrections I could be making to this. When I look at this I go, well there's some <laughs> what's wrong with this drawing? Let's put it that way. What's wrong with it? In a word proportion. It is not in proportion. How do I get it in proportion? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So I want to talk to you about two key concepts today, measurements, and the other is landmarks. Measurements help you to uh, determine the proportions of one part of your drawing to another. So you can see whether something is bigger or smaller than another part of the drawing and the other is landmarks. Help you to place your various elements so you can check the relationships between them in terms of their placement. So one of them is kind of the size of things, and the other is are they in the right place? And we're going to go deep into both of these topics. Uh, again, measurements and landmarks. First, I want to teach you how to turn yourself into a ruler. Have you ever seen you know, in movies and, and cartoons, a lot of times you'll see an artist and they're like holding their thumb up like this, or they're holding their pen up or their brush up like that. What is that about? It is actually a very useful tool that we really do use um, to help you to measure the proportions and relative lengths and um, sizes of different parts of your subject. So what you do is you take your elbow, lock it into your rib cage, and you hold your pen and you hold your pen between you, your eye, and the thing you're looking at. So, for instance, I'm going to be able to show you this by looking at that bookshelf. See that bookshelf right behind me? Um, and I am putting the top of the pen cap on that top shelf there. I'm putting my thumb, top of my thumb, on the part of the lower part of the shelf. Okay. So this little measurement of this bookshelf becomes a standard of measurement that I can use to measure the height of that lamp, for instance. I can say, okay, that lamp is just under the lamp is one bookshelf high. Or I can measure um, a picture on that side and I can go, okay, again, keeping the rel I have to keep my arm locked in there, but I can use it over and again. This is not the greatest demo of this, but I'm going to show you a much better demo when you go back in and draw this shoe. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to pick some arbitrary part of the shoe to use as my standard of measurement. So I'm going to measure this distance of the back of the shoe just above that kind of hole where your foot goes in. I say, okay, this is my, my measurement and everything is going to be relative to that. So if I know the measurement of that, I can just use it as a ruler and put it against anything else that I want to. Measurement. So I use that standard to say, okay, the top is one, two, three, and a little bit, maybe a, call it a half long. So I now know that the length of the shoe is three and a half times that hole. Now let's say, what is the height of the back of the shoe relative to that hole? Well, it's one. Now I can measure the lower side of the shoe. And again, I can put in the number of the shoe lengths. I'm just using that same standard. So now I know when I'm drawing the front of the shoe, for instance, I say, okay, this is how long I need to make it. 
All right, let's do a drawing using those measurements that we've taken. Um, so we know that that basically if, let's take our pen cap back here again. I'm using a different pen, which is just a bit bolder so you can see what I'm doing more clearly. But I'm taking my pen cap that I did the measurements with before, and I'm doing this. So there it is. That's the fourth, but I'm doing three and a half. So one, two, three and a half. So now when I look at my at my shoe, I know I'm, I'm turning it slightly at an angle because that's the angle that the, that the shoe is at. But I know that if I go here, um, that is going to be basically the place where my, sh oh, my foot goes into the shoe. This is the part that has the laces. This is the part that has the front of the shoe. And then I kind of come down here. And this part is where the very beginning of the sole is. And then I also can take um, my measurement here and I can measure this because I know that that's the height of the shoe, so the overall height. So I'm just going to draw it fairly quickly just so that we can um, kind of just talk about the, the concept here. So I'm drawing the this box. I want to get this whole part in into the one third and then this part with the um, laces and all that, I'm going to get in here roughly, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to polish this up a bit. And then I have the, the actual front of the shoe that kind of comes down to about here, and then it arcs back. So those are the three kind of key parts of the story, and they happen to line up with the three measurements that I ta have taken. So now I'm, so that's proportion. That was really helpful to me to have a sense of, okay, now I know how long that is. Because a lot of times you look at the front of the shoe and you just don't know how long is it really. And now we kind of do. So um, now I'm going to sort of swing back here. Now, now I'm going to start looking at landmarks a lot because they're going to help me to figure out where these things should be placed. So for instance, I'm coming up this line and I'm looking at this grommet here. Okay, so this grommet has a lace coming out of it and it is lined up I'm looking at also at the negative shape here of this part of the of the tongue of the shoe. And then I'm drawing this lace that's coming down here. And I know that it's more or less that length. Okay? Um, and then I'm looking at the placement of this lace, which is coming behind it. And then I might come down here and I might say, well, where's that grommet here? There's a grommet about there. And then there's a grommet sort of down here. I need to adjust this. So I'm constantly adjusting. That's another part of doing this sort of a of a kind of a detail detailed drawing is I need to be reassessing things as I go. And so then there's the various bits of the laces in here and uh, trying to do it from observation. I'm just drawing a bunch of strings in there. But then I do see that there's this, here's another landmark, which is this kind of big lace that's coming down, this part that's sticking out. And it comes down to not quite the bottom. Again, taking my my measurement here, you know, I don't want it to come all the way down to the to the point here, but I do want it to use it again as a landmark to draw a line that goes from here to here. You see there's that line? It's basically going there. And then I can look at the negative space of this part of the shoe here and I can draw that part down. I want to kind of match up to this measurement that I have here. I want to curve back and around. And I want to match up with the front. So now I have this whole part of the blue part of the shoe kind of outlined. And then I can draw some. I know that this, there's a dotted line here that curves down and connects here. And then there's this connection that goes back up here. Right, the whole front of the shoe. I mean, the sort of seam that runs along there. And then this part of the stitching only really starts about here. And uh, so I want to indicate that. And then when I look inside the shoe, just coming back up here, there's a little bit of a line in there. Um, and yeah, this is pretty, pretty accurate. So now let's look at another landmark, which is this grommet here. So this grommet is sitting kind of below that grommet, right? And then there's another grommet, which is here. How many times can I say the word grommet? Uh, where's Wallace? And then uh, there's another grommet that is sitting. It's about like one 
it's not quite a third of the way, but it's about here. And then there's another one that's about here. And then I connect those two with a, with a lace. And yeah, so this would all be pretty good. Now there's a bunch of layers of this sole that are kind of sitting down here. And, you know, I notice that there's a top level and then there's some, some sides. And then I come down here and I have this part here. And now I notice that there's like a little kind of where the arch of the shoe is, where the arch of the heel is, there's a little indentation. And that indentation is more or less below that thing. So that kind of represents the heel. I'll just quickly draw in these little um, arches here. Yeah, I got that. And then there's another part that comes in here. Now, where does the heel, where does this arch end and the, the sole begins again? Comes down to the ground. It's more or less just before this grommet. So it's kind of here. And so then I'll just um, put in my other little things. What's, what's the difference, the distance between each of these little indentations? I could get super anal about all this. I'm not going to, though, because I just can't. Care that much about every particular perfect one, but I have. If I really wanted to check out, like for instance, where does this part of the shoe line up to the in between the second and third of these holes? I more or less got that right. So there you go. That is basically the shoe, but now it is in proportion, and the relationships are pretty good. Now I look back, and I can and I can go in, and I can I could probably correct and adjust some of these things. There's some parts that are not like this lace actually sticks down further. You know, I could get really, really fiddly about all that stuff, but you get the general sense. This now looks like a shoe that's in proportion, which, uh, and looks more carefully observed perhaps than this thing. So, um, and again, looking at this one, here you see this part with the laces, I made it much bigger than it really is. And I made this much shorter and I made this bigger, whereas now they're in a correct balance. And, um, you know, minor things like that are helpful. So I did notice that I made this incorrect. This should be here, so this thing sticks up. Again, that's another landmark. I didn't notice that this line doesn't start at the top of it. It starts at the bottom. So I would ideally get rid of that line. But I didn't, so it's fine. And then this sticks up. That looks better. This also kind of arcs around here a bit more. So these curve around here. So these are the kinds of adjustments that you can continue to make if they're if they really matter to you, if you really want to perfect it. But you can also just do it more patiently the first time than I did. I kind of rushed through this a little bit just because I didn't want to have you spend all day watching me draw this shoe. I hope that this is clear that there's the, that there are ways of measuring without a ruler just by using a reference point that you measure with your pen or with your thumb, um, or you can go like this and then just see, like get used to doing that. Say, oh, this is this big. It's compared to that. This is that tall. Now I see how that, you're constantly doing these kinds of little micro comparisons and adjustments and also using landmarks, seeing how things line up. If this thing is over here, what's on the other side of it and how does that compare? This constant correction and adjustment is how you get more and more accurate drawings. Now, getting 100% accurate drawings isn't really the point. Uh, that is certainly, that can be a nice byproduct, but really learning to express yourself and feel confident is the most important thing that we're trying to do. But now you've seen that if you want to really work hard at it and take your time and study your subject as closely as possible, you can get things to be in proportion. There are all kinds of rules that we think have, we don't know about proportions, about perspective, about vanishing points, all that stuff. A lot of this you can overcome by simply doing a few measurements. A lot of times if I sit down to do a drawing of a building, I'll just measure how tall is it, how wide is it, put those marks down and kind of go from there. You don't need to make a hundred measuring points. Um, in order to feel confident, just get enough so that you get your bearings and then take your time, do slow contours, look at the negative space, and those elements together will help you to get something that's more and more accurate. 
a lot of this takes practice and internalizing these things, but you can always keep coming back to these tools, uh, measuring and looking at landmarks to get your bearings. I hope that's helpful. I'll see you in the next video where we will continue this uh, wild ride to making you into somebody who can draw anything that you want.